Hey friends, welcome to episode two of From the Heart for the Heart. Um, I'm your host, Brandon. I got Michael, our co-host back with me again. And we got Derek, our special guest for episode two. Um, we're excited. Yeah, yeah. We're excited for another episode. Um, episode one um, was it was the, it was amazing the feedback that came from it. Um, I know Mike and Derek can both attest to that too. We're really excited for episode two. Um, we're going to switch gears a little bit tonight. We're going to switch it up and talk a little about current events and something we all love, and that's sports. Um, we're going to stay centered on the Black Lives Matter movement a little bit on race, but we're going to move it over to a different subject tonight. We're we're excited to jump into it a little bit and 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 share how we feel. So, Mike, you want to you want to say a couple of words before we get started, Derek? Uh, not really much words that I got to say. I mean, I'm going to say a lot during this <laughs> discussion that we're going to have, and I'm really excited to get on all of these subjects that we're going to introduce to you guys. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm excited to talk about it too. It's like a sports is like a it's an area where like everyone's equal, but like the only thing that really matters is like can you ball, you know? That's right. So. At the end of the day, that's right. <laughs> that's for sure. So, yeah, tonight, um, as we said, we are going to switch gears and, and jump into some something on the sports side. A um, couple of different things that has been in our mind. We've had some discussions about amongst ourselves. And, you know, we want you to hear what we think and hear what you guys feel as well. So one of the first things we want to talk about, it's been on my mind, it's been on my heart a lot, Mike. You know how I feel about this um, is uh, what what went on a couple of weeks ago, and I still feel a certain way about it with Bubba Wallace and the noose incident um, in the NASCAR garage in Talladega, I believe is where it was. Um, Mike, I'll start with you. What what are your thoughts on how everything kind of went down? Uh, my thoughts, you know, people – People like to not know the facts before they speak on things, and even then, they make up their own facts. Uh, they, they or they ignore the facts from the get go. NASCAR is the one who reported this and said, "Hey, there was a noose in there. It wasn't Bubba Wallace." But immediately, as soon as they saw that this was a noose thing, before the FBI even got involved, I saw people saying, "This is a Jesse Smolier. Is this is Jesse all over again?" You know, you have one time, one time out of the many of times that this actually happens where people are actually uh, threatened or racially abused and you got one time to mess it up and it just messes it up for everybody else who comes forward about anything. So that being said, uh, if you know, we all know how it went through. The FBI said, hey, it, it wasn't news, but it wasn't put there to... Uh, Incite fear into right. Bubba Wallace, and people immediately, immediately attacked Bubba Wallace, and it wasn't him who reported it. It was never him. It was, <laughs> it was NASCAR who said, "Hey, this was there." But right. no, they and, and instead of saying, "I'm glad that this wasn't a hate crime," it was you had all these drivers support you. How dare you have all of these drivers support you and it not be a hate crime? Like, it's a bad thing that people came together just in case it might have been a hate crime. Here's the thing. I, I, I just want to say this before whatever, you know, and, and Derek, I'll let you, you know, speak, but it, it, it was a noose. Mm -hmm. I don't care yeah, how long. It, it was a noose. You know, I don't care what it was used to do. It wasn't used for what a noose is used for. But that was a freaking noose. You know, this is as hard as my language will ever get on this show, I promise. But it was a noose, you know, and um, I'll leave it at that, you know. <laughs> Derek, go ahead. Yeah, man. It wasn't like it was, like, made up or it was like, oh, well, he went in there and tied a noose. Or this was, it was like it was the only garage or whatever personal pit you know, personal stall right. where there was a noose. Right. So, like, I mean, that would immediately cause you to, like, okay, let's launch an investigation. 
And then wasn't yep. there, it was a video or a camera from like the year before that there was still that news in that. Right. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like you it know. was totally worth investigating. <laughs> you know? I, I mean, here's the thing. Let's, let's, let's look at it like this. Like, okay, NASCAR. Almost all the races are in the South. Okay, check. There's Confederate flags everywhere at a NASCAR race. Check. It was a noose. Check. Like, I don't understand. You know, like, it's whether it was there before or not, how long has Bubba Wallace been racing with NASCAR? Mm -hmm. How long has he come to Talladega? I bet you, I guarantee you, you know, I won't say that because I don't know NASCAR like that. But if you're, I, I doubt you change garages year to year, you know, or if it was there last year, why did we put him, Bubba Wallace, you know, there that weekend? And that's, that's, you know, that's, that's the thing, the probability of that. There's, I don't know how, uh, it's 40 something, 42, 43 drivers at these events. And mm -hmm. you're telling me that the one man, the one black guy who was campaigning for the Confederate flag to no longer fly. Didn't he have a Black Lives and, Matter car he was going to drive? Yeah. And, he, and yeah. I, he drove it. And literally two weeks, you, this is stuff of movies. Two weeks later, he has a noose hanging and it's been there since October. So my thoughts is somebody had to have seen that since it's been up there since mm -hmm. October. Somebody saw that. And nobody was like, you know what? Let me take this down. Kind of looks crazy because maybe they're insensitive to what a noose is or they're just ignoring it like it's been here. Not my job. Or, I mean. It might have been on the garage door lever. You know what I mean? Like if they so like get a one foot garage door, yeah, get yeah, the cable to pull it down. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it was, but you know that it just is so visible there. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it, 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 I don't know, man. That I, I, but I point out the response. response. That was amazing. That store's response was crazy. You know, and and you I, saying that makes all me, that coming. You, and that's the thing, you know, that makes me, I'll step back on what I said, where, where I was, those three things, that's NASCAR's fan culture. Let me say that strictly because of NASCAR's response, you know, ban the Confederate flags right away. You know, they, like you said, they told NASCAR, NASCAR went with the investigation. We're not about to jump into this nonsense. You know what I mean? And, and it, it, mm -hmm. it I, I thought, I don't know, for me, the biggest thing was like, was like what you said, Mike, how, how even before it happened, you know, in the heat of everything that's going on, it was, we're going to, we're not going to believe him, you know, him. And even though it wasn't him, you know, we're just chasing a story. And then it turns out it was already here before, you know, it was previously put up and he's the one that said, okay, you know, thankfully it wasn't directed at me. You know, let's go back to focusing on, you know, your regular television. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, people jumped on it. You know, I thought that was my biggest takeaway from it. It, it was was just the is it and it showed once again in another situation, you know, where people are really at with it. You know. And and people yeah. are using his I don't watch NASCAR. I don't know how good Bubba Wallace is. But mm -hmm. it, we're gonna talk about Kaepernick later in our show, but it's just like that they wanna they want to quiet his voice because he's not that good or he's not the top driver. Okay. He's using this as a publicity stunt to get more endorsers or something like that. Like he needs this for attention. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's the only black guy. He doesn't need attention. He's literally the only black guy driving a car. That's enough attention right there in NASCAR. <laughs> NASCAR. Exactly. Exactly. That, oh man. Yeah. Yeah, it's always, and I don't know him like first. I don't, I don't. I don't watch NASCAR like what Mike said, but I know there there can be like, like Tony Stewart, like Kyle Busch, like they're, they're NASCAR drivers are some of them are really big hotheads. Like they will pop off, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They say what they want quite a bit. That's not everybody, yeah. but uh, you know. Right. They, you, it's a it's a common thing to see it on Sports Center where one guy gets out of his car and goes and gets in another guy's face mm -hmm. all the time. You know, road so, rage. I don't and I don't know Bubba Wallace's reputation on that, but I don't know. That that would be interesting to like 
know the whole like know know all that too. I don't know. Yeah. I think I mean you saw NASCAR and the other drivers' reactions, I guess. You know what I mean? Like how they pushed his car. When you think about that race, they pushed his car to the front, you know, um, to start the race and things like that. And he had everybody's support. So I'd like to, I'd like to hope, you know, he has a, yeah. a um, I won't necessarily say he's a nice guy, but he's got a good level of comp- you know, competitiveness to him. You know what I mean? Somebody bumps you, you know, you, you, you know, but I hope he's, you know, he isn't a, you know, necessarily a jerk or anything like that, but it, he seemed to have had this, you know, the support. And still has it, yeah. you know. Um, you know, moving forward with something like that, it, 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 shoot, I paid attention, you know, to the race necessarily, you know. After that, you know, I'm not gonna still sit and watch them drive in circles <laughs> for a couple of hours. Um, but I, it's, it's definitely gonna. Is that de- I have a peaked interest now? You know, I do have somebody that pay attention to how he does. You know, after races now, though, so that's what's coming. That for me, that's definitely for sure. And I, I'm just glad that NASCAR is taking the steps that is that it has taken so quickly. It's it's the last sport that myself, I personally thought would have any kind of impact during this whole movement. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. removing the Confederate flag, I mean, that was a big step. We have statues still everywhere, and NASCAR is like, you know what? We're just going to take this step. We're going to do that. No more. And uh, I would hope that if it ever came down to me and I told uh, my friends, hey, I think somebody's doing this to scare me. And it came back that, hey, no, it was just there or it was just a coincidence that they wouldn't just they wouldn't talk down on me because I had fear. Mm-hmm. When, when, when black people see a noose, it it, it brings Post traumatic stress disorder. It, it brings up something. Yeah. And to have that relief that, hey, nobody was doing this for you, I would hope that people would say, okay, man, I'm glad that you're okay. I'm glad that nobody's actually trying to hurt you. Not, you're fake. You did this for attention. You're what's wrong with America. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine for a minute, and I guess my, this is a question more for you. Um, like, that's like Bob Wallace's job. Mm-hmm. You know, so imagine going to your job every day and, and I, again, I told you the three things about the fan culture. He probably didn't get nice stuff said to him walking to the garage every day, no matter where the race was at. I think they talked about drivers saying stuff to him that he's had to deal with, Mm -hmm. but that's your job, you know? So like, and, and again, he didn't even say anything, but. I'm sure he walked in and saw that and felt just like we just got done talking about, you know what I mean? But it's, you're, you're, I mean, I couldn't imagine that. I couldn't imagine walking in where I work at and seeing Confederate flags everywhere, you know, being waved with, with uh, honor, or being waved with pride, you know, or to see something like that in the bathroom or, you know, I couldn't, and I freak out the same way, you mm-hmm. know, I report it, you know, but, but if it's everywhere and it's just, Hey, that's what we do, you know, that's that's so that's you know for me that's i don't know you know i couldn't that's that's tough to deal with as an african-american and that's just a grander scale of what we actually deal with i mean we might not deal with it to that level that public because we live i work in a place that won't allow that right but it doesn't mean that it's not happening on some kind of scale i our work is a combination of people from the area so mm-hmm. i'm just because they don't say it out loud don't mean and that's a whole other talk that we can get on to work racism in the workforce things that we've experienced in the workforce from all that uh it, it happens in the military i'm a military i'm a vet it happens everywhere there's no place that this cannot leak into that's crazy. all right now we're going to shift gears we're going to talk about the nba after we came from nascar and what the nba is doing after the murder of george floyd and we're going to talk about how the NBA is approaching this. Uh, Woody, we can start with Woody and Eric. We can start with uh, the athletes protesting in the streets. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think we always have athletes from the NBA protesting. So go ahead and speak on that. As you said that, Mike, you can go back to Trayvon Martin. 
mm-hmm. and Eric Garner. For NBA players, um, especially LeBron James, you know, he's always been – that's one of the, the – that's probably his greatest asset. You know, I'd say I'm not going to jump into the GOAT debate, you know, or anything like that. Yeah, but at, <laughs> <laughs> I love The Last Dance, okay? That was the greatest documentary I've ever seen in my life. We'll put that to bed right right away. <laughs> um, but um, that's that's – of the three who you argue about, that's what makes him stand out in his light for me is the way he's always been a pioneer, you know, in social, you know, with, in, with social justice. Um, the NBA itself has always been on the forefront of whether it's been uh, rights for players or, you know what I mean, from the contract side or, or I think the NBA was the first one that professional sport that took, uh, marijuana off their, you know, their drug test list mm-hmm. because players used it recovering, mm-hmm. you know, as well too. So the NBA has always been on the forefront of that, but I've been excited seeing, um, oh man, I've it's seen followed. everybody at a protest, mm-hmm. you know. I think Major doing, League Baseball was first. That Did they? Yeah. Okay, that's, okay. That's side note. How long have they, huh? It's been a while. Okay, it's I didn't even know that. I didn't realize that. I did not realize baseball took it off, though. That's good, though, that they're on the forefront. Baseball as well, too. Um, but going back t- uh, to the NBA with the protesting, thanks again, Derek, for that. I really didn't know that. Um, I've seen everybody. You know, it's been crazy. Damian Lillard, I've seen Giannis. I've seen Russ Westbrook. I've seen James Harden. Um, I've seen – J.J. Redick. I haven't J.J. Seen Redick. J.J. Redick. No, he wasn't protesting, but he had a – he had a podcast that he okay, does yep. oh, that he was talking Kyle about. Porver. Uh, racism. Kyle Porver wrote yep. an article. Um, I Here's even think so. before all this, had, yeah, you know, about where he stands. And he talked about how um, just one of the things with basketball more than any other sport is how important it is to the black culture. Mm-hmm. You know, and when you're in like that, you're, it's, you're part of that family and that brotherhood. You know, so I think that's why it's a natural transition. You know, a lot of these guys, before they got to where they got, or even while they've been here, have dealt with all this stuff in places that they've grown up with, or grown up, I should say, places they've grown up in. Uh, So just from that aspect, that's what kind of got me excited. You know, I'm ready for the season to start. Um, It's going to be interesting how they're going to do social – Justice messages on the back of their jerseys. Some of the players are, you know, as well, too. I don't think LeBron is, though, actually, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think Le- he's- LeBron's not. Uh, and, I mean, I, I can agree with what he said. He said he wasn't really uh, talked to about because maybe he had a certain message, but the message that he was wanted – he wasn't asked about, so I guess he didn't get approval for it. So he's just going to wear his name. And okay. I think that's okay for LeBron because of what he, what he's done with the I Can't Breathe shirts. Everybody was wearing I Can't Breathe when Eric Garner mm-hmm. died. You know, that was that's the difference between NBA and NFL. Everybody, the, the, face, of, the face of the NBA is black. Right. LeBron James. Before that, Kobe Bryant. Before that, Michael Jordan. Like it's so it's been a little bit more progressive than most of the other sports when it comes to hearing the b- voice of the black community. Mm-hmm. And it, Man, it's slowly like MJ was silent. You know, there's that one quote, and he said, "You know, white people buy shoes too." Yeah. You know, Republicans buy shoes. Of the minute that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Uh, but it's slowly, Kobe was kind of silent. Kobe wasn't, he didn't talk real loud. And then LeBron, LeBron has come into. I think. I, I've noticed like the, like what you guys, were, I think Brandon, you guys both mentioned it. Like um, it's kind of been like a slow progressive, like of the NBA players getting their voice out there. Um, is it, I guess where this all goes back to in my mind is Donald Sterling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, when the Clippers, when the Clippers players came out and threw all their jerseys in a pile, yep. or was it their warm ups or turned something so. inside out? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, 
they all were like, you know, there's a couple minutes to go before the game. Correct me if I'm wrong. There's a couple minutes to go before the game, and they're like, I'm not sure. I'm like, they weren't really sure. I think Doc Rivers like convinced everybody to play, but they're like, I don't think I want to play. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it was, right. it was the playoffs. Game. It was the playoffs. Yeah. They're like, I, you know, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm gonna suit up and go out there and play. You know, if people listening don't know, it's Donald Sterling. You know, it had just come out. You know, the night before, the day before, through like TMZ recording of Donald Sterling like telling his mistress like why don't why do you hang out with those black or you know there's some sort of slang or and then just started calling derogatory terms yep. and uh, racial slurs oh yeah I remember that yeah that was... it's, so it's slowly kind of in the NBA it's like it's the easy thing to do um, in white America, I don't know a better word for it, is to say like, well, this isn't, there's little bitty pockets, in it, but this isn't a consen- consensus in America. This isn't a big mm-hmm. issue. Right. You know, it's really easy to do that too. It's really easy to say like, and especially for people like, they aren't racist. Mm-hmm. Their friends aren't racist. Like, we just don't deal with it. You know, you have your little clicks and tribes in life that you go through life with and it's just not here or like your circle might not be bigger than 100 people you know and you're saying it's it's real easy and you know what else is easy is to see that these nba players these athletes they have millions of dollars and they Mm -hmm. they, people want to discredit what they're saying when a lot of these people a lot a lot of these people came from poor families and exactly. that sports was the only way to make it out of whatever circumstances they were in. So they want to forget the first 18, 20 something years of their life and, because they have millions of dollars in now. So they can't speak on social justice because nobody's coming to LeBron James house and going to do something. But LeBron James house did get sprayed with the N word. So it's like, it doesn't matter how much money you have. Right. Yep. Don Sterling made Don Don Sterling's thought process is what made that like like I mean they all that money that they <laughs> make that they make Don Sterling and that's still how they're viewed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like it's it man. I don't I don't know. It's almost that that dynamic is almost a slave owner to slaves. Mm-hmm. You know, from that standpoint. I don't know how many people are familiar with Django, but yeah, oh yeah, scene where the one of the slaves was fighting for one of the slave masters, and he loved him for that. You know, he's winning him money. You know, but as soon as that slave became, who he stopped winning, or he became too damaged, yep, you're done. You're not my boy anymore. I'm not going to treat you as good. Blah 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 blah. So it's always. You know, if as long as you can do something for me, dude. You're- I, when I watch the NFL Combine, it reminds me of the modern day slave trade. Mm-hmm. You're you're lining up these guys, specimens. How fast can they run? How much can they lift? How far can they do this? You know, measuring their hands, measuring their wingspan. How high can they jump? How far can they jump? You know what I mean? To do that, like you said, that same thing. Okay, now you're going to come on my team. You're going to make me billions of dollars. <laughs> you know, and not if I'm Jerry Jones, especially, or Robert Kraft, and all the money that comes with winning and stuff like that. And as soon as, you know, you bust out your knee or, or you have your production slips, let's get you up out of here. We'll get somebody else in to do the exact same they thing. Do get, they do get paid pretty handsomely though they get paid nice <laughs> but even if we're talking about it it's the same as everybody else i might get in trouble for this is their worth to what it is that they do mm-hmm. like if you think mm-hmm. about lebron james and i don't know the number the exact number what when he went he left cleveland the first time i think the like the city of cleveland's economy lost millions of dollars mm-hmm. You know, like like that whole downtown area that used to be live for the games, especially as he was 
really rising up, you know, and and I'm not, you know, Derek, you're right. They get paid handsomely. Patrick Mahomes' contract <laughs> is ridiculous. You know what I mean? But, like, best believe that Patrick Mahomes, for whatever reason, regressed to – Jay Cutler, they'd find their way out of that. Touch you, you know what I'm saying? Let's move on. Yeah, that's part of the obligations. Smoking and, Jay Cutler. You know, and I'll use it. And that's, that's a bad example. You're, <laughs> Not you're necessarily regrets, but gets hurt. Say he gets hurt, you know, because Jay got paid too. <laughs> um, if he gets There's hurt, you know, let's move him on out the way, you know. So. Um, I think so. What you so if I can just repeat what you're saying, then back to you, like um, just the way people, just the way you know guys are treated as like, what can you do for me? Property, you know, and then and then pitch to the side. Well, I mean, they are they do. It's not quite the same, you know, because they get paid pretty well. They get oh, yeah. insurance. They get you know they get a retirement fund after like in the NFL it's like three years you get a pension. Mm -hmm. uh, you know NBA I think it's like six or seven. I, or it's a little like, bit longer. You know what I mean? Like yes, yeah, a little bit longer. They don't, they don't get like just pitched to the side, but like they they are kind of seen like yeah. If you can't provide anything to me or for me, like there's some. There's the boot. <laughs> There's the boot. Yeah. So final thoughts on the NBA before we switch gears into our next topic. Um, my personal thoughts, the slogans on the back, that's a good idea. I mean, you know, there's more, there's way more that we can do. And um, I, I think it's a good thing because it's going to be <clears throat> a talking point for when live sports comes mm -hmm. along. You, you won't be able to get away from live sports and not see Black Lives Matter, say her name, or whatever else they have on their shirts, on their jersey. So you you can get a, you can watch sports, but it's still gonna be in your face. Like, hey, we're still doing this, even though we're trying to win a championship. It's still back here. That never stops. I'm glad sports are back. <laughs> you know, for one, two. You know, I'm glad basketball's back. So let's uh, jump back, switch gears, but jump back towards the NFL. Um, talk about our last kind of topic that we've kind of been throwing back and forth for the last couple of weeks. Um, the NFL is going to, I think it's just for the first, if we have football, the first week, maybe they're going to play the black national anthem. Um, are they going to play it? I'm not sure if they're going to play it before or after the, uh, the actual national anthem or instead of. Um, but they're doing the Black National Anthem for the first couple of games. Um, I want to hear what, how you guys feel about this. Mike, you, Derek, you guys both, you're, you're the football guys. Um, Mike, you've been real adamant about this and other things that have gone on in the NFL, as you said. Derek, we talked, we talked in snippets about how you felt. So I want to hear, you know, your thoughts as well, too. Mike, I'll start with you. Black National Anthem. Um, did you know there's a Black National Anthem? First of all, <laughs> before we started, <laughs> I actually found out about you talking about five, <laughs> maybe seven years ago. I okay. found out what it, <laughs> what it was, uh, and I heard it. I, I I don't play it at any of my events. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not something that I play all the time or anything. I don't know the words to it. I can't recite it or anything like that. But yeah. I understand what it is and what it's for. And I'm not gonna say it's not important. Um, I wouldn't turn it off. I would stand up, you know, to show respect to it and whatnot. Um, but with the NBA, with the NFL doing it, I don't, I don't know whose idea it was. The NFL is so behind every other sport when it comes to the black voice being heard amongst the uh, athletes, and this. You have yeah. behind in everything, too. <laughs> everything. I'm thinking in my guaranteed, head. Guaranteed women, money, domestic, contract, violence, like, like, I'm no, like, they're terrible. don't exist. Like, what are you How many times has Josh about? Gordon been suspended <laughs> for pot? Like, <laughs> come back. Yeah, and, hey, what, hey, you promise? You, you think you promise? <laughs> yeah, man, I won't. I won't do it this time. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. All right. You're good. Okay. 
Thanks. <laughs> but I don't I don't know whose idea it was for this to be done. Um yeah, right. as the fight divisive. Uh because I've already seen it. I've already seen people who, people who didn't know that there was an actual black national anthem saying they're gonna create a national anthem for black people. It was that. There's also people saying, is there, are we gonna play the Hispanic? Are we gonna play the Asian? Are we gonna play right. this bliss at national anthem? And- uh, There's no age, I don't know if there's any Asian football uh, players in the NFL, are there? <laughs> I wouldn't, Asian? I, think, I don't know. I think there might be a probably kicker. as many redheads as there is. There might be a <laughs> kicker or something. I think. Andy Dalton. <laughs> so, so there's you know, but it's just uh, it's it's now Derek's not, thinking. Look, look. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was like a couple, a couple dudes. But I, I would say it's 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 not what we asked for, by any means. Mm. We didn't. It's not. We. Mm. I don't think anybody was like. You know what? The NFL should play the Black National Black Anthem. National Anthem. <laughs> I think that's that's what we want to do. Right. I mean, we, we've asked, apologize to Cap, say his name. Mm -hmm. You you put him in the game. Put him in the league. Put him on a team. Blackballed him, but no. You know what? This might help them. This might help them get on our side if we play this anthem at the beginning of the game with the national anthem. And it's and, and no telling how long it's gonna be. As I only said for week one to begin with. So it it's it's just an empty offering, I suppose. Too much. Yeah. I think there. I think it would mean I think it would like maybe if they played it at the Super Bowl or something, I think like that would be like you know, because it's a it's a special day, mm -hmm. you know, and everyone always watches the national anthem ever since, you know. MJ, Michael Jackson, and Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. Uh, but uh, I think the point of the national anthem, though, is like, na like national. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I mean? Like, it's not like right. little pockets of have their own anthem. It's like it's it, it's it's our um, experiment that's called America. Mm -hmm. Right. The melting pot of it. You know. Right. Every person in America is a mutt. You know what I mean? Like, a, well, pardon me. Most of us. Most um, of us. All not inclusive. The natives. Yep. Yeah. Not the natives. But uh, it's like some. Yeah. I don't know. I think I know it's pandering. Most you know definitely. Like, yep. I, I think so too. To I think so too. But I, it, 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 it's like too too little, too late. You know, um, but yeah. it's, it's a bad PR move. Like, how do yeah, you, dude. like, for the last three years, we've been arguing about the regular national anthem mm -hmm. related around race. So, you do that, you know what I mean? Again, Something they're gonna point back to, like, we did see what we did, you, like, okay, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, it's, and, it's just don't, just don't play it. And you I know, think, like, I think it's going to invite people to protest during that song. And I, my, me personally, I don't think black people are going to care like, oh my God, you're not standing for the black national anthem. Like it's not going to get the rise that they want. Cause I mean, we don't, we don't know. I'm speaking for myself. We don't know it word from word, <laughs> you know? You speak for me too. <laughs> so if, if you decide to kneel, it's not going to be that, Oh my God! I can't believe that you disrespected the Black National Anthem. Dude, yeah, that, I'm not gonna get fired up. Not gonna get after us. Yeah, you know? I'm good. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, I might kneel. You know, like, yeah. you know, like I'm not. It's I'm cool without it. You and know, unless the unless the address announcer, uh, you know, the guy comes over the loudspeaker and says, you know, our, the Black National Anthem. Like, I wouldn't even be able to tell you when it starts. You know, I don't nope. know. I I don't know it. Mm -hmm. I'm good without it. I, I'm good without it. Yeah. yeah. It's so, cool when... Go ahead. So here, I just had this thought, like, so, like, there's this... So everyone, like, in sports, though, like, what I had said earlier, like, everyone's kind of level on an even playing field. Yeah. And it's, it's all meritocracy, you know? Yeah. How good you are, how much work you put in, 
Mm -hmm. and we'll determine. Well, we lost Derek for a quick second. Yeah, and like the meritocracy of, of sports, um, the only thing that matters, you know, in your playing time, your awards or whatever, is if you can ball. Um, but like it kind of understanding like in a, in a slight way, um, whenever I see like a white running back, you know, is out there like Christian McCaffrey, mm -hmm. like he's my guy. He's a dog, you know I mean? bro. Like, dude, um, he's my dude. Or like if you see like um, like Lynn Sanity, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like yep. there was a reason like people go nuts for that. Like if they right. in the the guy that they couldn't couldn't quite get there, or the guy that no everyone counted out, not that couldn't mm -hmm. quite get there. But you know what I mean? Like McCaffrey, little white dude, like just Jimmer for that. Remember Jimmer? Jimmer? I yeah. love Jimmer. You know. Little guy. <laughs> yeah. So I think real quick. It, it, it can provide glimpses though into like um how like when you're in the minority of that sport, mm -hmm. um, what it could feel like, you know, like right. Like, yeah. Man, there was there was a like whenever I was in high school, there was a college coach that came out and said, like, I don't recruit white running back. Like, what? But like just stuff mm. like that, like that wouldn't fly nowadays. Mm -hmm. but, uh, That's crazy. But yeah, like and no one, no one said anything. You know what I mean? Because it was just like, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't either. You know. <laughs> 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 like yeah, Christian McCaffrey, though. You know? Yeah, you, I mean, you miss. Yeah, dude, it's just like, yeah, that was just a thought I had, though. Gerald McCoy said it he's like that's a bad white boy you know what i mean and like people actually that like was polarizing i was a polarizing comment but if you know sports like you said there you you understand what he meant mm -hmm. you know what i mean it ain't got nothing to do with like hey is hey it's like you said he's in a different world you know he's in a he's a minority and he's out here doing his thing mm -hmm. you know that's really you know but real quick mike um, just because I had the thought in my head still, you mentioned Kaepernick, mm -hmm. you mentioned Colin, um, and how it's like everything that they're trying to do is everything that, except what they need to do, mm -hmm. you know, so how do you, how do you feel, you know, really, I mean, honestly, let's, let's, let's short term it, you know, short term out of the long term, it's, he nil, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think he was he benched during that season or was he already benched? Uh, no, he that, wasn't benched yet. He was still playing yes. at that point uh -huh. and didn't resign with the team. Mm -hmm. um, I think he didn't accept the deal, is how it initially started, then bounced around at every team. We actually mentioned Jay Cutler. He had retired, came out of retirement and signed with the team, and, and, and as well as a, a whole bunch of other players. Um, he had a workout in front of teams that I think Jay-Z helped organize that there was a whole bunch of stories going on with this, that, and the other. And, and now here we are today, mm -hmm. you know, with police brutality. And I say that a little bit louder mm -hmm. as the reason why we're here today, you know. So yeah. where are your thoughts on that, Mike? I mean, speaking on Cap, we can go, we can make this a whole episode. But yeah, sure, yeah, it could be a whole episode. The hero now, man. <laughs> Cap initially sat, and then a Green Beret spoke with him and asked him why he sat. And the right. Green Beret decided to compromise. Let's compromise. Kneel. That's what we do at graves. That's what we do to show respect in the military. We kneel. And people, the, the narrative got switched to where it is disrespectful to kneel during the national anthem while you have people in the bathroom at the concession stands doing whatever they want to, but you know what, him kneeling. And that it's always, that's not the right way to protest. And now we're here to where we are. There's looting, there's destruction of property, there's burning cities down. Oh, whoa, 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 this isn't the right way either. So you didn't like Kaepernick and you didn't like it now. But now, I mean, I've seen people who have come to me and say, man, I didn't get it at first. 
I get it now. But you still have those people who say, Black Lives Matter, I support your, mo your movement, but I hate that Kaepernick is the face of it because he has a white mom, because he has millions of dollars. Like, what was he really protesting? This, this had nothing to do with him. He was, he was raised by a white woman. I think he was adopted. Yeah, right? yep. So, and, and we know football, we know sports have a prime. Players have their prime. Right. And Kaepernick has lost about four years of his NFL career to be the voice. Really? Of wow. And, and he didn't waver. And now the NFL, I don't, I don't know the legal terms. I don't know what is all in the contract when they settled. Maybe they can't say Kaepernick's name. Maybe they can't say that they were wrong or anything of that nature to say, hey, you were I right. What about that settlement? Yeah, you're right. It wasn't. You don't know thing. anything about that. Yep. So yeah, probably sign on non-disclosure. And any 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 kind of social awareness should have cap involved in it. If you're not, if he's not going to be on a team, because I don't want him to just be on a team just to be there. You right, know? Tebow. Yeah, I don't want him to just be there because now you feel bad and you want to give him money, like. He hasn't played in four years, so it's it's a lose lose situation. If somebody signs him, and he's terrible, they're gonna be like, "See, this is why we didn't sign him. This is why right. because he's right. he was terrible. <laughs> right? It wasn't because he kneeled. No, he's terrible. Uh, and if he does get signed, then you have people who are still gonna be like, "I hate Kaepernick. I'm gonna boycott the NFL. I don't care what he does in the NFL. Boycott and how like you're gonna hate." <laughs> Like, I don't, you're going to hate somebody for peacefully protesting mm -hmm. police brutality, you know? And then the conversation is, he'll stop kneeling. Let's have this conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how many names that we hashtagged from the first time he kneeled until we said enough was enough, mm -hmm. you know? that something like this, you know, happened, man. And it's like, that's, man, what was his, what was the Nike slogan that he had the commercial that they came out with? Was it? Just do it commercial, wasn't it? It, it was a just do it commercial, but it was something about sacrificing, even if it means everything. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. have to find it, you know, and, yeah, and, yeah. and, and you know, and, um, but it, like, like and for you remember people, people cut their socks off, cut their Nike socks up. Some stores quit selling Nike stuff. Oh, all they way, burn all their stuff because Kaepernick did a commercial for Nike. They did a commercial for Nike and they protested Nike because he did a commercial. So they protested yeah. his protest. <laughs> yeah, man. And like, but here's the, and the funny thing about that real quick, Derek, is they, you already bought yeah. it. Like, <laughs> you already bought it, you know? So I guess it's a symbolic way of saying, you know, I don't support you, you know, and what it is that you, for what you stand for, because the stance you took, you know, but Cap did, that's why Cap did the same thing, you know? So um, it, they need to make, they need to do right. They need to do right by him. Yeah. You know, they're even, like, and this is a whole nother thing. They're changing the name of the Washington Redskins. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's awesome in and of itself. I'd never, like, Madden, they announced that they're not, they've already taken them off for 20, you know, Madden 21. And that's, that's awesome. You know what I mean? And maybe tomorrow they'll make a, an actual panel to punish dudes who are on videos beating up women, which mm -hmm. is a whole nother issue that they have in the NFL. You know, and that would be great, too. But they still ain't said this man's name. The NFL, you know what I mean? They just have so much further to go. They, I mean, they got to play catch up. They are behind in so many areas. And it, it, I love the game of football. I love the game of football over everything. Love football. All, over all sports. Football is my sport. But it's so behind when it comes to anything outside of football and even contracts. We can get into that another time. Even contracts, they are so behind when it comes to everybody else. 
but so Cap, uh, he starts what Mike had said, like he starts by um, sitting down, you know, holding the just couch and put his leg. Um, yeah. And then I think it's Nate, Nate Bowles, I believe. I believe it started with a B. He was a long snapper for the uh, Seattle Seahawks and the Green Beret. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, you know, he, he, you know, came to him was like, hey, man, like, you can't be doing, you know, what, you know, so they, they talked it out and, like, Nate gave him his blessing. You know, okay, you want to kneel? I understand. Um, that, that's one of the, that's one of the um, rights that he, like, for, right, fought for. Right. <laughs> um, but there was a couple of things along the way where, like, there was a big deal. He called police pigs. It was wrong. Um, he wore cops, you know, socks about it. Um, there's a couple of things where, like, there's a couple instances like along the way where he's he had that something Castro to do. shirt, right? Mm -hmm. Or not yeah. Castro, but uh, the Me the Mexican revolutionist, I believe, right? Okay. I can't think of what's his name. Okay. Yes. Yeah. There's a couple, and like Cap's been hated on since he's been in the league because I remember like before memes were, you know, they were just funny things. There was a meme about him like being hated on. Because he does have a white mom, and like, mm -hmm. um, for having you know sleeve tattoos, but it's scripture, like, right? You know what I mean? Like, right. he was hated on, and then so he he's not, he's like no stranger to people hating on him, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, but but to to say that you know he has to be perfect in order for for people to understand like what he was pointing people pointing out to people like that's that's not right either, you know, to, you know, he's done a couple things along the way where it's like, I think Stephen A pointed out like, oh, I'm done with him. He's just trying to be a martyr. And like, I think the NBA or the NFL like messed with him again. I had heard, I don't know the whole story about the tryout where he moved it last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. With Cap, like he hasn't been perfect throughout like this whole thing. He's done a couple of things here and there. It's like, ah, that probably that probably wasn't the wisest thing to say, or that wasn't the wisest move to make. Um, and people use that to discredit what he's saying. Right. Um, but but it's like you can't use that as an excuse, like not to listen. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, exactly. um, you can't like just speak louder than him or anyone for that matter, and just like drown them out, like. I can, people can point things out about me, you know, where it's like, yeah, you know, he, he likes this or that, or he, he said this or that. And it's like, everything he says isn't true. Mm -hmm. like, well, I don't think, right. like just over and over again, I don't know what it is about what he, the way he chose, he just hit like a pinprick. He like hit the right button. Every time. And yeah. Every time it's gonna be, and I think uh, I don't remember. Maybe it was ESPN. They're gonna do a documentary, a docu series, I believe, on Kaepernick. I don't remember who he's partnering with. Don't quote me on that. Source it, whatever. Right now, huh? He's a hot commodity right now. Did yeah, he yes. signed him? ESPN signed him. He's, I mean, he's gonna have his feet everywhere, but the NFL. <laughs> but the place that it happened, he's gonna be everywhere else. But the NFL. <laughs> and it's simply for the fact that, like, dude, like, like there's, like, like, Josh Gordon. And, again, as in Illinois, marijuana is legal. Colorado, it's, the states is, is medically, you know, decriminalized in a lot of places, but it's against the rules of the NFL. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think this dude is cleared to be a free agent again. You know? No like. And and we joked about him earlier and being up, you know, in North Chicago, you know, not North Chicago, but Northern Illinois, outside Chicago, and actually Bears training camp was in town until <clears throat> this year would have been the first year, even without COVID. But so Jay, Jay Cutler, you know Jay Cutler. There's never a positive thing said about Jay Cutler, mm -hmm. you know, and 
he retired from the game of football and they signed him, come out of, brought him out of retirement in Miami, you know? So it's, and I'm not harping on the, the black ball, this, that, or the other it didn't happen. It's now, it's now that we're here. And it's because of this, it's from what you were talking about, man, get this man back into the game. He grew up playing, you know, and loves and, and sacrificed for something bigger than him. I think Mike brought up a good point, though. Um, like, if, if, uh, if he comes back and, like, he doesn't have it, then everyone will always point, well, you know, people always will try and – I can see him, like, just – right. I can see it too. He's he's he's. He like might get said, to the so. point where he's like, yeah. He, I mean, he might he might let him he might let him say like, uh, hey, you know, we would love to invite you back or whatnot. But now, but I don't know. They've they've had those opportunities. If if you, if you're Kaepernick, I'll ask both of you, and and a team came and and asked you, you know, do you would you play? Personally, me, no, because I, I, I know, I know, if I don't live up to the expectations, that's what they're gonna say. I, I love the game of football. I would love to play on a professional level, but what he stood for, what his protest has brought to the world, if he loses, if he has a losing record. He has to win the Super Bowl the first year he's back. Undefeated, bro. For nobody to say anything. He has Not to win pick. the Super Bowl. If he doesn't win the Super Bowl, if he got if if he does not get there, then they're they're gonna say he he didn't get signed because he sucked. He didn't get signed because of his protest. Derek, what about you? I don't know. I mean, I could see it going both ways for him, though. Um, and it just being, like, too much. or. But it, it is a business. So when you start to lose people money, I can see why, you know, like, um, what what's the business here? Um, I don't know. If you got a restaurant and a cook, you know, like, starts acting out and, I don't know. Causing negative press. Yeah. Causing negative press and like mm -hmm. starts costing you money, then you're, you're probably going to let the cook go, uh, say he was insubordinate, and, you know, separate from him. So they, he started costing people money, and they're like, uh uh, you ain't coming back. Um, so I could see why. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just seeing, like, I understand, like, the business side of it. But I don't know, man. I don't know if I would come back. I mean, I turned the Bears off because Jay Cutler would I mean, throw the ball to the other team. The Bears, though. So, huh? Who would want to play for the Bears, though? Oh my God. All right, let's let's wrap it up. Uh, <laughs> we can go on forever about all these topics, um, guys. But you know, we want to try to shorten this one up from the first episode. So, uh, Derek. You know, man, it's always great talking to you. Um, man, thankful you could be a part um, a guest. Man, you're going to end up being one of the hosts. By the time we're done with these couple of episodes that we're doing, um, as always, um, Mike, you know, I'll let you kind of go ahead and, you know, say your final remarks as well, too, and get on out of here. You know, I mean, uh, our, our, our podcast is from the heart for the heart. And that's all that we want. We want to be honest. We want to have an open discussion, no matter how much it may be uncomfortable. We just want to be able to have that discussion, have people on our show who may not see things that we see, and just have a honest conversation because we come from two different backgrounds. And that's what our podcast is about. From the heart, from, from our heart, for your heart, and vice versa. We want to know what you think. We want to know what you feel and why you feel it. So thanks for joining. Hopefully you have some great discussions on our videos, comments, you know, sharing, liking it, sending it out to everybody. We just hope that you enjoy the content. Thanks again for watching and listening, guys. You guys, everyone have a good night.